Hello folks, I'm Ankit Chaudhary, one of the co-founders of Mantis Pro Gaming. Today I'll be running you through a step-by-step -step guide on how to set up the Mantis Gamepad Pro app. In case you're not already familiar, the Mantis Gamepad Pro app lets you transform your smartphone into a pro-grade handheld gaming console. With exclusive gamepad customizations and intricate mapping features, Mantis has become the highest rated app in the segment and is exactly the app your powerful gamepad deserves. So without any further ado, let's get started. Installing Mantis Gamepad Pro is pretty straightforward. We open Google Play and search for Mantis. Now Mantis Gamepad Pro is available for free on Google Play. So we tap and install and bam, it should be downloaded on your phone in a jiffy. The first thing you'll notice when you load up Mantis is that it asks you to start Mantis Buddy. So what is Mantis Buddy and why is it even required? In short, Mantis Buddy is a service which requires ADB permissions and enables on-screen control mapping on Android without any specific hardware. This service is required to work around Android restrictions and provide band-safe gaming on Android. Alright then, let's go ahead and launch Mantis Buddy. In the first step, we need to enable floating widgets. It only needs to be done once. Enabling it is quite simple. Tap on Enable, then find Mantis Gamepad Pro from the list and enable the switch. That's it. Next up, in step 2, we ought to enable USB debugging in developer options. In case developer options is not already turned on, we need to enable it first. To do so, go into Settings, then About Phone, then find the build number and tap on it for 7 times. This should enable the developer options and you can then find it in the settings of your phone. Again, these settings need to be turned on only once. Now back to step 2, let's go into developer options and enable USB debugging now. Step 3 is similar to step 2 where you need to enable wireless debugging this time. The setting can be found right below USB debugging in the debugging section. You just need to make sure you're connected to a wireless connection when enabling this option. It can also be done via connecting to a hotspot. Remember, after Mantis Buddy is launched, the Wi-Fi connection will not be required anymore and can be disconnected. In step 4, we need to allow the debugging dialog. It can take up to 20 seconds or so for the dialog to actually appear. When the dialog appears, we check the always allow prompt and tap on allow. If the dialog doesn't appear for more than 20 seconds, mark the step as done and move forward. Step number 5 is crucial. If not enabled, the pairing dialog will disappear when trying to pair. In this step, we need to turn on allow screen overlay on settings. It can be found near the bottom of the debugging section and this only needs to be turned on once. After the setting has been enabled, mark the step as done. The next step is required only on some brand of devices. On Xiaomi, Redmi and Poco devices, you need to turn on the security settings option as indicated in the graphic. On Oppo, Vivo, Realme and some OnePlus devices, you need to turn on Disable Permission Monitoring. It is generally found at the very bottom of the developer options. If the setting is not present on your device, don't worry, just move to the next step. So we are now ready to pair via wireless debugging and to launch Mantis Buddy. So let's do this. Please note that in case you have used any version prior to version 2.0.0, we do not need to use split screen anymore. After tapping on start pairing, you'll notice Mantis's pairing widget will appear over the developer options. It's now finally time to pair with ADB and launch Mantis Buddy. So we go into wireless debugging and tap on pair with pairing code. An Android dialog should then appear with the pairing code and port. We need to enter both these values into the Mantis's pairing widget. But please note that these codes are generated dynamically by Android and changes every time the dialog goes out of focus or is closed. 
Next, we enter the six digit pairing code and then the five digit port number into the pairing widget and hit pair. The process could take up to two minutes. So sit tight and wait for Mantis Buddy to launch. If the process gets stuck or fails, we have a fact section at the end of the video, which should help you get the problem sorted. Okay, so Mantis Buddy is now up and ready to go for us. Please note that after you restart your device, please make sure you turn on wireless debugging and then open Mantis. Mantis Buddy will then quite simply auto launch for you without any hassles. With the latest update, Mantis now supports all the different kinds of gamepad layout styles. And Mantis can generally auto detect the gamepad layout correctly, but gives you the option to change it at any point in time. The following gamepad layouts are supported. Nintendo, Generic, Xbox, and of course the PlayStation, which is the correct layout for this controller. Mantis houses the most robust gamepad auto calibration algorithm, which has been refined over time with data of thousands of gamepad models from our loving community. Let's see how well the auto calibration mechanism worked in this case for our PlayStation DualSense game controller. As you can see, the calibration looks just about perfect. The buttons, the triggers and the thumbsticks all are being detected correctly. If that's not the case for your gamepad, you should have a look at the next section. Mantis also features a seamless manual calibration mechanism which enables calibration of literally any game controller and on any device. All you need to do is tap and hold the exact physical button on your gamepad as and when indicated on the screen one by one. Mantis now also supports mapping four extra buttons if your gamepad possesses those. This is only just a normal DualSense controller and doesn't have those extra buttons, so we'll just skip these one by one. Next, we map the thumbsticks by rotating them clockwise as indicated. Once done, we start testing and the calibration looks fine. everything's set up nicely, it's time we map and play some actual games. First we add our favorite ones. The games now show up in the Mantis game launcher. Tapping on any of them will launch the game with Mantis on-screen mapping overlay on top of it. Now let's clip on our Razer Kishi to our phone and then we launch Call of Duty Mobile on our device. With Mantis's new virtual mouse cursor feature, we can navigate through most of the in-game menus without actually touching the screen. We can toggle the cursor on and off by pressing both the thumbstick buttons together. And we can move the virtual cursor around using the left thumbstick and click on screen using the A button. It's a handy feature and was recently added to the ever-growing list of pro features. Alright then, let's get a game going against AI and map the on-screen controls to our gamepad. We start off by mapping the left thumbstick to the movement joystick on screen. This should allow us to move our character in-game. Nice then, we're off to a good start. As you'd expect, the right stick still can't control the camera. So let's go ahead and map the right stick to the camera. Fantastic. The character movement and camera panning are sorted now. Now let's map a button, which in this case is the shoot button. We'll map it to our right trigger or RT. 
Please note that in a shooter game like COD, map the left on-screen shoot button if there is one for the best experience. Great job. We can now actually use our controller to shoot. That's great. Next, we map the scope button. Most shooter games only support toggle scope. That's where Mantis's hold to scope feature comes in. Using the feature, you can actually scope as long as you're holding the button on your controller and it scopes out as soon as you stop holding. This is a Mantis Pro feature. It seems the right stick sensitivity needs a little tweak. We'll get into that a little later in the video. Meanwhile, let's quickly map out the other in-game actions to our gamepad. So time now to tweak the sensitivity of the camera movement. Mantis is actually the only app in the segment which allows you to tweak X and Y axis sensitivity separately. It's a great feature for recoil control in shooters and it's included in the free version. Apart from sensitivity, you can also invert axis of each of the thumbsticks separately as per your liking. This is really useful in any game where flying a plane is involved. I'll try and show you another incredible Mantis Pro feature called Sequence or Order. With this feature, you can map the same gamepad button in different places on the screen and touches would be registered one by one according to the sequence number in a loop. Now that everything's mapped all nicely, allow me to show you some gameplay footage of me having tons of fun playing Call of Duty Mobile with the GameSet X2 powered by Mantis. Hope you enjoy the footage. This concludes the essential part of the video guide. What follows includes information about additional features and answers to frequently asked questions. Next thing we have a look at in this guide is the customization option for the gamepad in Mantis. We've already looked at the sensitivity and access inversion options. At the global level, we have dead zone adjustment sliders. So what is a dead zone? The thumbstick dead zone is the amount your thumbstick can move before it's recognized in-game. By default, it is set to 20% in Mantis. The default value should work great for most use cases and gamepads. But if you are using a non-worn out gamepad of a good brand, you can lower the value to around 10 or so. This will give you the extra precision you may need in shooters especially. Many gamepads report thumbsticks incorrectly to Android. For example, moving left to right may be reported as up to down. And that's where the swap axis feature comes in. 
it can completely solve the issue and make your controller perfectly usable again. Apart from this, you can always calibrate and even change your gamepad layout anytime by tapping on change and choosing the correct layout for your gamepad. Moving on to the facts section, if you're stuck in this phase while connecting Mantis Buddy, just follow the steps shown next. First, toggle USB debugging on and off, then tap on revoke USB debugging authorizations, then again toggle wireless debugging on and off. That should fix your problem, then go ahead and pair Mantis Buddy again. If you're facing issues like latency etc on a Xiaomi device, you will have to disable MIUI's aggressive battery saver. To do so, follow the steps shown next. If you're facing issues on a Samsung device, the first thing you need to do is go into the Game Launcher app, then Game Booster, set Game Optimization to Performance. If that doesn't solve the issue, just disable the Game Launcher app completely. Last but not the least, in case you're not being able to type in-game and your virtual keyboard just disappears, just tap and hold the Mantis icon to switch to keyboard mode and vice versa. That's it for today. Hope you find this video to be super duper useful. Now please note that this is the official channel of Mantis Pro Gaming so please consider subscribing to stay updated with the latest news about our products. Also please feel free to ask any questions in the comments below, we'll try and help you out with them as soon as possible. 